so the components of the uh, this one locus and or maybe it's just corresponding to partition lambda. Yeah. So partition n. Uh, so this component parameterizes the following. We have O and P that is split as a direct sum of other bundles. Uh, the, the rank. And then um, you have that T. If I restrict it to one of the EI, goes to the previous one. So P, uh, if I restrict it to the EI, goes from the EI to EI minus one. And uh, that is, I mean, it depends on the S, obviously, but that's what the experience does. And only and this is injected. And the zeroth one is the zero. So this was the description. And so because the because of the thing that these are injected, the ranks are uh, so the, this rank must be bigger or equal to this rank, and so this is a traditional bar. Okay, so this was the situation. And we had also seen, so one desired by Anaka Thomas was that this, um, this contribution here, put one computes here, so integral over this virtual fundamental class of the Corresponding to lambda, one over the virtual order, order number of the virtual normal values, which I need now just to write like this, and that's short for this, uh, will be zero unless the partition has a very special form, namely we have that uh, 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 lambda is just repeatedly. The same number here, R1, so P times R1 times this is uh, a, I didn't say anything about the proof, requires some device, which is called the uh, action localization. I did not uh, look into it, but I don't see that explain it. And uh, we, we also showed, uh, let me see, we also showed that, uh, and that I sketched, that uh, if I take a, a virtual order number of the modular space of sheets, notice that by definition, I didn't talk about stability, but stability is it the, the component corresponding to the partition class R? Quantity is just modular space for sheet. This is equal to minus one. Virtual dimension was going to R C1 C2. This is the virtual dimension of the small light space. So remember this was C R C2 minus R minus one C1 squared minus R squared minus one S. Um so this thing times uh, the corresponding invariant for the 
corresponding contribution to the block between the two. So, Okay, and this call essentially from the bridge right on the sketch. So now, um, in particular, uh, so this part one would call the horizontal button between the variance. So one plus one is R. The one corresponding to uh, the partition one PR, which would be called the vertical button. Okay. Okay. And so these as here. I also um, wanted to maybe just call the generating function that is called. And uh, according to what you wrote there, you can write this as the sum of all lambda partitions of R of uh, the corresponding contribution corresponding to the partition lambda. So I just take the integral over that component corresponding to the partition lambda. Um, and so in particular, we see that if R is a prime number, there are only two contributions. In particular, if R is prime, we have that Which we would call the horizontal partition function is the vertical. Okay, so now. Maybe I want to talk about Starhacker's structure here. Then I have to explain some ingredients in it. And then I have to talk about kind of how one would do it. Uh, and this has this then involves a so-called uh, nested Hilbert scheme. So that's what introduce those two. But uh, as the <coughs> So first, I will again write down Clarkus uh, a few minutes in the way in which I also want to prove it, uh, so, which, so that I don't have so much baggage. Um, so, of course, for the term, so we think what? What? How is SUR related to? 
Uh, oh no, I mean, so as you well, no, it's not like I. So I, I didn't invent this name. No one could call it proper word once, and somebody called it like this. Unlucky case, it was my co-author that didn't object. But anyway, so that's. Uh, but the thing is, you know, you are an SQI. I think just corresponds to the fact that we look at uh, um, the chiefs of rank R, and so somehow the structure groups is U R or S U R. I think that's all that is meant. And in principle, in physics or otherwise, one can also con consider, uh, you know. Uh, Whatever principal bundles with or, or other kind of bundles with other kind of structure groups. So but this I, I wouldn't know how to do. I mean, it's not, so or, or looking at bundles with some extra structure with the so S U R means you maybe have a you can have an emission metric or something, and uh, one could have them symplectic or whatever. And in each case, one could try to write down such a thing, and then if one knows how to do it, one would get uh, another version. But uh, you know, here for me, as you are just means looking at bundles of rank R. But if the, one could look, if one knows how to do the generalizations with other structures. So, so we take zero. So then the statement is there exists some power series. Given explicit formulas for A and B, but I will not. I will not prove the explicit formulas. I mean, for B, I didn't give an explicit formula. I only give an explicit normalization. But I don't uh, view this. I gave an explicit formula for A, and Lara Capu said, but I will not not show that proof, which is a bit more technical. Um, but uh, otherwise, we have just this thing: C I J. Um, one small equals i, small equals r, one. So these are all power series in well, see, conservative yeah, Laurent series in Q, so the one of us you are. And such that for all surface pairs of the surface in the Line from on it as above, so bigger than zero, each one push to zero, and towards one. Then we have the formula, and so this is the formula for the vertical. So this thing is H or something is equal to A. Sum over all r minus one couples of classes in the second homology. Um, we write this delta of the first joint class that we had here and the sum in i. R minus one over I times theta I and times product over all uh, I small j, so one small I small j to R minus one and of this class, this power series Cij, uh, which I had here. Um, to the power, power the intersection number of these two 
process that we're asking about. Okay, so this is the, the general structure. So I should, I had the last time said what this means, but just uh, for A and E in second homology, the coefficients in that, we mean that delta AD is a fixed R will be put equal to one if A minus E is divisible by R in the homology. And zero So delta AD means that C1 is equal to the sum of these classes of I times these classes modulo R. So okay. Now ah, and I forgot something. And that's very important. Because <laughs> that's what I explained. That this this formula like this is actually not true. Um, now I slightly unfortunate. So because I I want to put something here. Okay. So what I put here is the product I equals one to R minus one of the Zabel Whitman range of beta I. We have this class is beta I. And so I will review what these are. Um, so we just we have this, we multiply by the product of the double quicken branch. So you see by itself, this is an infinite sum, but it is the fact that on the um, under our assumption, there are only Finite many classes in the cohomology of the surface such that the Zabek written event is non zero. So, therefore, the sum is actually finite. Yes. Now, maybe as we are using this and they play a role, I want to briefly review what the Zyrus and Vector invariants are in this case. I don't know, I don't think anybody of you will, or everybody of you will be aware of it. By itself, um, the Vector invariants are some uh, C infinity invariants of four manifolds. But here we are looking at them in algebra geometry. So, so many foods. For that, um, um, but if uh, uh, S is an algebraic surface, we can say Pg of S is bigger than zero and H1 S. Uh, it would be enough to say H1 of S S is equal. To zero, then they are uh, easy to compute using algebra geometry. There are also different conventions in algebra geometry and uh, differential. Uh, homology. So, what I would call uh, double equation for beta would be somehow the branch of topology double equation of. Now, I don't know precisely which one it was, something like two beta minus x. 
anyway, so there's in, in, in different topology when you use this thing, it's uh, a bit different uh, associated to a characteristic homology class. Uh, but here we associate with any homology. Okay, it doesn't matter. This is our convention. And I mean, now I haven't said what it is, but if you, once I told you what this is, you can uh, see what the difference is. So, how does one, so what, how are these defined? So, these are equivalent variants, they associate to a class, say, A in the second homology number that was written of A. Now, how are they defined in algebraic geometry? I hope I got it right. I, <laughs> I studied this a little bit. So, um, so S. We have assumed this H1 of S or S equal to zero. Uh, we get that uh, the Picard group S. Um, no, that's not quite right. So is a subgroup. Yeah, so, so in some sense, so in this particular case, so we also uh, have, so in order for this invariance to be not non-zero, we need that um, this class is of type 1-1. So this would be a subgroup of okay. and so and so we assume it's of type one one, so thus we want to identify the class corresponding line bar. If I have a class of type one, which is uh, what we define over that, which defines the, the line bar. So, so then the cyber quick moduli space is just a relativization of the space of sections. It's a very simple modular space. So, we somehow the subject invariant is a number we compute using this model space, which is just projective space. Um, and now this modelized space, which I call so M. No, I mean, I have a first term class of the Polymorphic line bundle, then uh, it must be of type 1 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but somehow it turns out that the modulized space, so the modulized space will always be something like H0 of SL, under this assumption. And so, if um, if L is not a line bundle, then you know this will be zero. So, you know, if, if it's not a holomorphic line bundle, there are no holomorphic sections. This will be zero. So invariance will be zero if it's not of type one one. That's what I said. But I, I kind of anyway. So this is our model space. Um, and now this ML is an obstruction theory.
so, which uh, looks as follows. Firstly, maybe you can remember, we have here S, the projection of S times an L. So now, for instance, you can first be honest, you know, one knows what the tension space, so projective space at a certain point in projective spaces, and we can globalize this over did it right. So to let four of minus one be the topological line bundle, a bundle of uh, so I could call this Q upper star. Um, Q lower star L, which is just uh, Q upper star of the space of sections. Now, viewed as a vector bound on a map. No, we can look at it. So we have obviously on each fiber, it's a projectivization. You know, we have it's just projective space. We can look at four minus one. And then uh, and you know, everybody knows that the tangent space of the uh, projective space at the point corresponding to a certain line is the the homomorphisms from this line to the quotient by the line. And so one can globalize this and say the tangent bundle is a one from pi of fullback minus one correct. Star, star L divided by the quotient. This just means that fiberwise we have the homomorphisms from uh, the uh, yeah I hope from the topological bundle to the quotient, and then um, and so I can write this simpler. As lower star of this two star, two star f tensor by upper star of four minus one, and we have now we have a tensorized to four one, but we but it is so we have a factor this divided by this one. So this is the tension bundle and the abstraction bundle is just as it's often the case that the tension is something like H zero, the abstraction is H one. So this will be so abstraction bundle. Is a O and equal to R one kilo star the same. Okay, so this is something very simple and very explicit. And so one can uh, obviously you could also compute this. Uh, this is a trivial bundle, and then you do this, so everything is obvious. And so, if we, you know, now we have that our modular space is a projective space, so it's smooth, and the obstruction bundle is locally free, so then we know that the virtual fundamental class is the Euler class of this. So that's Okay. 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 
So, um, this corresponds to the fact that this obstruction bundle does not contain a trivial subbundle, you know, because the, the Euler class of something, you know, has one, if there's a factor, O, you take the Euler class, that means you multiply everything with the top term class of the trivial bundle O, so it becomes zero. So that's basically what this corresponds to. Um, and this is, uh, so if this is the case, then first, then the virtual dimension of uh, this level system model is equal to zero. This is actually in the differential geometric context, uh, such a statement is, a, is an open conjecture. It means that, uh, or it's not clear whether this is true. You would say, uh, so this is the translation in geometry would say all algebraic surfaces with pg bigger than zero is on R of simple type. Okay, so that's uh, um, the second statement is that uh, if I take the of this, line bundle, this is equal to the holomorphic other characteristic S for equivalent S squared. Here. You know, for a line one on the surface, you have one half L squared minus L S plus L S. And the third one is that H zero of S L must be bigger than zero. That's clear because otherwise the model is basically empty. And we also need that H two. So, which is the same as saying that H0 S PS means F must be bigger than zero. And in this case, if you work out how this is defined, you find you can explicitly compute the Zabbard-Witten variant corresponding to L, which is sine. To the dimension S L minus one, take the geometric genus of S minus one. All this is in, is in some sense an exercise if you go through the And so, in particular, and this I stated some time before, if uh, S as a connected canonical divisor. Um, then, so maybe, uh, maybe, okay. uh, then, 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 L is equal to zero unless uh, L is equal to OS or L is equal to AS. And uh, the OS is one. So it is minus one.
at any rate, you see that for the zero fit domain to be zero, the curve itself must be effective, the line bundle must be effective, but it must not be too effective, it must still be smaller than the canonical class. So this is somehow the strong restriction that you have to see. And uh, okay. So this is uh, what these things are. So we have ah, I'm very slow. <laughs> Okay, now we want to, uh, at least uh, I want to talk about these next differences. So now, now I come to, so compute the version of our predicting events and try to do it. So let's recall what the one line is for the vertical profit in base is. So it was just N C one. One the perfect size is so it really depends on what I mean. Perfect size is yes, right. Where that e is a direct sum of rank one sheets, i equals zero, a minus one. I cross into your rank one. S and uh, T goes from E I E I minus one tensor case. This is always an objective. And then uh, is restricted. So now this relates it to even scheme of points because if you have a torsion free sheet of range one, then it's standard that this is the ideal sheet of a zero dimensional scheme times the line. So that's the I is of the form I P I is of L I where C I is I can set here with the points either standard operation or I just write it out is S and L I is a line. Um, and then um, obviously here we have always a map from the i to the i minus one tensor s. So that means that e uh, that l i minus one minus l i plus ts must be back. So now you can therefore imagine you can describe this kind of thing in terms of Hilbert schemes, you know, somehow Hilbert schemes, Hilbert schemes of points, parametrizing these, and Hilbert schemes of um, curves, parametrizing um, the, uh, in some sense, the, the line bundle plus the corresponding map, the image of the. So, 
put to four the tuple to n, which is n zero to n r minus one and that to the r. So positive integers but also beta, which is a which is an element in beta zero no, one to beta r minus one in uh, <coughs> R minus one, you know, which however is corresponds to an effective line margin. Um, we define we put S N is just a product of these little points. points I do it like this with square brackets. And uh, I write beta linear system for beta is the product I equals one R minus one the linear system plus one beta i. So call that the linear system beta i means the projectivization of okay and then we have the corresponding nested pivot scheme which is a a, a certain incidence correspondence in the product of this and this. So the corresponding test is given. This is for me to take some zero dimensional substance at zero to the R minus one and some curves one to the R minus one such that. So this whole thing is in the product of S N times S N. So what do we want? That uh, the ideal sheet of C I twisted with minus C I is contained in the ideal sheet. This is for all i. So you want that. So <clears throat> okay. So we have the different theoretical schemes, but we want that if we twist with the addition of the curve, it is contained in the next one. This is a, and as you can imagine, this is a rather terrible. I don't think uh, it must be quite singular, whatever. But anyway, um, but uh, we can first say that uh, we can identify uh, our uh, this uh, 
modular space for the vertical of the Wittgen invariance, which we're doing it with such things. And then we have to see what to do with it. So then the union over all C2 of the N S which are C1 C2 and C R. I don't know where we know. So this thing is isomorphic. Certain um, of these nested units. So, because you know, you can see these ideal sheaves, and they are, we always have a, a, a map from one ideal sheet tensor with something to an ideal sheet then there is something else there should be a, a morphism from them which means that precisely if i uh, there would be a section of uh, whatever li minus one minus li such that the ideal sheet of the zero set of that section um tends over with one is contained to the next and so on precisely the situation here you just put it together so now one has to So maybe I leave this because this is but I can at least write down what it is. And it's a bit ugly, but anyway. So if one puts it all together, so we have to see how does the second turn class of the sheaf comes come to pass, how does the first first turn class come to pass, and you know, what are these conditions? If we put it together, we have the NS. So if we put uh, write this number q of a1 to a r minus one is uh, this crazy sum uh, i and r minus j divided by r and a i j so this a i on the second of all so, um, plus sum I from one to R minus one and I times R minus I to two R as the number with the intersection of the module, so that's that. Then if I look at this thing. Uh, uh, is the union as more union of uh, these things and with some numerical condition first C one must be equal to the sum i equals zero or one minus one i and the s minus theta i and c2 must be equal to the sum n so this is just the sum of the n i Um, plus r uh, minus one divided by two r. Let's see what is squared. So plus this could be two. Two. Yes. So this is just. So if you just look at this, you know, if you write such a thing and you have these corresponding max, then you know that uh, the, the corresponding C height is always uh, at I minus one of 
and I. So it's this one, L I minus one minus L I plus S. This is the class of the, the C I lies in that corresponding beta. And then, so the, the first joint class of our E is the sum of all these uh, L I's. This way, it gives us that. And the second joint class is you know, computed by the usual product formula, and this will give us this one. And so we have just a description of the uh, of the polarized space in terms of these nested fields. Um, now, uh, okay. Now maybe I I don't think. So maybe I should say uh, maybe I should stop here. I mean, it doesn't make much sense. So uh, I mean, it's a little bit. So the thing is, the next thing is that. So as I said, this this space is very terrible. And so it doesn't make much sense to compute with it. But now uh, one can define a virtual fundamental class. So space, these spaces are, uh, you know, are certain components of this modelized space of vertical wrapping. So therefore, if one takes the uh, the virtual fundamental class or the obstruction theory, one has on this thing coming from the localization from uh, the virtual localization. This gives us an obstruction theory on that. One can actually compute what this is in terms of the given data. And then one can say, okay, this thing lies inside this much nicer space. This is a product of Hilbert's more points times the product of projected spaces. So one can, instead of saying what this virtual fundamental class here, is one can say what is this, this push for or for this to this thing? Then one can compute here of essentially just the little thing of one. And then uh, this this we do next time, and that will do this thing, and we'd also set up the stage for giving explicit computations for what these power series A, B, and C, C, I, J are. Okay, maybe I, I stop here. I, yeah, I, I would is. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, I have two questions completely unreal. I mean, not questions. Um, well, I guess maybe questions and completely unrelated. So, with this, uh, what you were just describing, this is kind of a, a local complete intersection here. No, I mean, this uh, nested Hilbert scheme, you can sort of explicitly say how it uh, sits inside um, this much nicer, smooth ambient space. No. Yeah, I don't know. Is it the local complete intersection? Oh, okay, I don't I, know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I didn't think about how it's actually. I mean, so. Um, but when you push it forward to the essentially, you have to calculate its class right inside. Uh, well, anyway, yeah. I guess we'll see next time. I think the. Yeah, I mean, there's a relatively simple formula for the push forward of the class. So that is, uh, I mean. In some sense, anyway, so this thing is very singular, but it carries a virtual fundamental class. And the nice thing is one can push it, push it forward to a nice space where one can uh, then explicitly say in terms of standard things, one knows on Hilbert schemes what the virtual fundamental class is. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. But that seems, it seems like it's expressible in terms of, I mean, there's a, so this doesn't occur as a section of, a, it seems like it should occur as a section of a, um, a vector bond. I mean, that's how you probably calculate it by push forward. Okay, so I, I must admit that I was now just wanting to take this result kind of at face value to say, you know, whatever. I, so now a miracle occurs and the push forward of this fundamental class is this. I had, have actually not looked into the proof, but you're right that most likely one should do the way one would do it is that one finds some kind of section of something, but I, I didn't look at the proof, so I cannot tell you. Yeah, I, it seems like this is how it should go. But yeah, I'm looking forward also to seeing some details in that. But the second thing I wanted to ask, which is completely unrelated, is what happens to this whole theory when the rank is zero, right? So when you look at uh, dimension one sheaves on the surface. So obviously one still has the Gisek, the Gieseker Maruyama space. So that makes sense. But is there a way to... Um, 
yeah, I don't know. How, what, what does this become? Does it is, is completely nonsensical when the rank is zero, or does one get anything interesting? And is there? Uh, so I, I don't think, I don't know what that has been studied. I mean, uh, so I mean, certainly whatever methods we have here won't work. I mean, that's, uh, but um, that doesn't mean that it's, I mean, it could work. I mean, one could hope that one could do something like this, a model of pure sheaves. It's somehow would be more related maybe to some kind of fixed things on, on curves, no, but it's some kind of, but I don't know. I haven't seen it done. Uh, so and I haven't tried to, to do it. So I, I, I don't know, but uh, at least then, uh, I mean, so in, in very, at least, you know, you would have some kind of compact, you know, you would have some kind of relative compacted by Jacobian over some linear system. Yeah, that's right. That would be a relative, yeah. A corresponding Hitchin system or something like that, or some part of it. But I, I but you know, how, together, how long what happens at the, at the bad fiber. So I don't know, it has not, I don't know where it has been studied, but it certainly would be somehow interesting. Yeah. I think it has the potential to be very interesting somehow because, but anyway, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't. Well, thank you. Sorry. Thanks. Uh, I think so, but I didn't think about, I mean, you put the, Obviously, you could do something really trivial and say that these numbers are both zero. <laughs> no, we are there, we are with one one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no. Obviously, uh, for the whole setup, it, it, it's also important to deal with the case when this is zero. This is somehow the kind of, uh, if you wish, the, the, for this, the perturbation part of the addition factor or something like that. I mean, it says somehow the constant part to pull out and it's important that you want to do that. And that obviously is some easy thing about something over some integral over some projective space. Now here in the case where you have one and one, but I expect, you know, I expect one to do it, but I haven't done it. I mean, it's, it, you know, it's a, you know, you're just saying that, I don't know. I would really have to think. I mean, it depends on the state. And then, I mean, I would think it would most likely still be singular and so on. I don't know. You know when, the, when the point lies on the, on the curve and so on, I mean, it's not so nice, but the, I'm not quite sure. So, uh, anyway, I, 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 I certainly, I, I cannot, if I haven't thought about it, I cannot solve problems on blackboard. I mean, I'm not very good at this kind of design. But then, anyway, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's certainly something, I think small cases one should be studied. I, I can try to think about it, but I, I haven't. And as I said, the case that this n is equal to zero is kind of trivial, but we can easily do it. It's something about objective cases. And then, and that's important for, you know, you actually want to know what the constant term is. This was excellent.